All right. And gold uh, finding its bearings. Dollar down. Dollar continuation. 102.55 printing here. S&P shooting up. Euro uh, finding some strength. Gold retesting 1950 currently. 1951.5. I feel like I'm an auction or somebody commented that yesterday. Do I hear from 1952? Do I hear 1952? Right? I could, I could pass. Uh, S&P 500 really staying strong here. I'm loving to see this. I'm still in my trade. I'll show you guys my brokerage statement. Uh, or my brokerage account um, where I am long s and I'll log in really quick. Um, so we are currently floating over 2000 on this trade. This one is going rock solid. This trade is just killing it. We took this inside of the group and um, I don't actually have a take profit. I'm just using this to track the trade. Um, but this trade is just going crazy. Look at this. At this point, we are several are in profit. Trailing stop has been locked uh, and I'm looking to do more of that today here. What a move. Gold popping up. Dollar bearish. We must, we got to go check the numbers. Let's see what we got in terms of PPI here this morning. Let's go quickly to take a look at that um, here today. So Forex Factory uh, PPI numbers came in minus 0.3% month over month and core PPI month over month remained uh, as expected, actually grew by 0.2%. But this is a much lower than expected number by 0.2% lower we got we're expecting minus 0.1 percent we got minus 0.3 percent showing some slowing in producer prices this is big deal for the dollar very bearish i would say and adds to the case against the dollar right now gold finding its bearings but still stuck at 1950. we'll see if it's able to break out here and again i am long s p 500 that is my primary trade at this moment um i'll go back to my my s p uh, long position. Again, this is a trade alert that was shared uh, Friday, but we just haven't even have a chance. I've been trailing this trade aggressively and it just does not want to pull back. You can see all the updates that I've been making on this. This was my initial entry price pulled back. I called this trade alert out inside of the group and we have just since been trailing this stop loss. You can see there it's trailed further and then we trailed it again after it broke clean through the highs. And then um, we trailed it even further after yesterday's CPI number, followed by today's PPI number, continues to push the S&P into profit. This is a crazy trading week for us. It's been a, a, an abnormally good trading week. I should I should clarify, not every trading week looks like this for me. This is a very, very good trading week. Uh, as we continue to hold this S&P long bias, this dollar bearishness is working out beautifully right now. This trade floating $2,050. We are now on the other side of the news. PPI numbers came out. They were lower than expected. This shows dollar weakness. This shows potential slowdown in prices. Matches beautifully with the CPI number that we got yesterday. This is a great report in terms of what the Fed wants to see. And I think that almost certainly we see a rate pause going into this afternoon's meeting. There's not a lot of surprises there, but what is potentially up for debate, up for surprise, is the July meeting, which we are going to get some insight on during the meeting today. And today with this number, we add more confluence that the dollar looks weak, that the indices look strong, that gold is still disappointing everyone because it's not going either direction. But again, fortunately, we've been catching that indices trade big time, which has been a big mover for the accounts. Euro. Uh, Look at this. I mean, this is a four hour chart. This is a beautiful bullish move. I mean, you can't get much more of a textbook bullish move going on for the euro right now. Um, and we've got to talk about a few things with this move, right? The euro against the dollar. The euro is kind of winning right now with all this this uh, cooling inflation news coming out for the US dollar. The US dollar has lost its touch, I think, for now. Of course, we'll have to see. We have Fed meeting later, so it's it's too soon to really speak solidly on it. But this PPI number followed uh, before uh, I'm following the CPI number that we got yesterday, in my opinion, confirms the dollar bearish thesis that I've had. Um, again, price pulling back, found support here this morning and now breaking clean through the highs. Where's the next trade for this? Well, I think personally, there's nothing here up in these prices, but pullbacks after a breakout. Maybe the euro just continues to push higher. Let's take a look at the pound as well. Pound USD looking very bullish as well. Oh my goodness, guys. This is just a strong chart. You can see this makes a lot of sense to me. And I want to show you guys something um, real quick in terms of central bank forecast stuff. That's what, what it's all about today. You have many traders out there trading purely technical charts. You may not need to know all the fundamentals, but let me give you the highlights right now. The US dollar is so weak because all of this cooling inflation stuff 
is contributing to forecasts for inflation to continue to decline, which will follow, uh, which what will follow will ideally be, if, if we stay on the course, rates coming down. All you need to know in terms of the simple fundamentals of interest rates, gener generally speaking, higher interest rates mean stronger currency, but not necessarily where they are today. It's all about the future. The market is all about the future projections. This is why people are so confused by news, especially if they haven't taken the time to learn, you know, the economics behind markets. They're like, oh, news makes no sense. Something comes out and it goes the other way. Usually it makes a lot of sense. It's just that you don't understand the economics. You don't understand the fundamentals. Markets don't pay attention to today's news. They pay attention to forecasts for news in the future, right? Um, so when we talk about interest rates, and projections for them to come down. That is why the Fed meeting this afternoon will be so important to market participants. It's all about the future for markets. Markets do not care about, by the time news comes out, most people have sort of anticipated what's gonna happen. If you're talking fundamentals, markets are looking forward. So let's look forward together. Inflation numbers are expected to continue coming down, but let's compare it to some other counterparts. Let's talk UK. UK is expected to hold their interest rates for much longer at higher levels and inflation is expected to come down, but they have a lot further to go. They are just getting under control the 10% handle for inflation, but they still have a lot further than the US to go. So let's remember the key thing we talked about. Higher interest rates mean more bullish for the currency as they're making stuff more expensive and the value of their currency inevitably is going to go up. Well, look at the dollar. Things are already expected to cool off. We're much further in the curve on dealing with inflation. And so when we look at pound USD, I'm bullish. And so is the market. Again, professional traders, they understand the fundamentals. They trade the fundamentals. They use them in their trading. Um, I'm not, you know, here's the thing. There was, uh, I've, I've had many, many conversations with hedge fund managers. When I was doing the podcast series, I had uh, two or three professional money managers on my show. And during those periods, all of them said, yeah, technicals are important, but fundamentals are very important. Uh, technicals help you with entries and exits and managing uh, position sizing and that sort of thing. But fundamentals are what give you direction. At least that's how I trade. And that's how many, um, you know, very professional traders that, I, that I've worked with and spoken with, that's what they do. They use the fundamentals to help guide the direction. Right now, the direction has been dollar bearish thesis, uh, pound strength, right? UK has really high inflation. They're expected to keep their rates higher for longer compared to the US and hence why we are generally bullish right now on the pound against the dollar specifically. So where do we go with that? Well, then we take the technical side and we say, okay, uh, bullish pushing here on the, on the technical side, fundamentals do match up. You have some areas of value on this chart, but uh, again, I'm not going to look to chase. So I'm still going to look for pullbacks. I'm going to look for opportunities to possibly pick up the pound against the dollar, but it's got to give me a chance to do so at a reasonable price. So possibly pullbacks here, possibly pullbacks here. We could look for attempts to get long. Now, the other thing though, is that, you know, you might ask, well, what about, what about the Euro? You talked about the Euro, the Euro, look at this Euro, maybe even makes more sense to me. Interest rates are expected to stay high for a lot longer, and there's not even forecast right now on our data to see any sort of rate uh, cuts in the future. Inflation is expected to come down, but again, comparing this to the US where inflation and interest rates are expected to come down, we have a different story here. So when we look at the Euro, I'm generally bullish on the Euro against the dollar, and this chart matches beautifully to that thesis. From COT, it looks like they're kind of betting on more of a dovish stance for um, the yen uh, looks also although it's majority long on the euro it looks like they were shifting some kind of sentiment i don't know if they're like expecting a pause or a hike really according to cot but forecasts say that they're gonna hike again um and i think overall if i were to if i were to like i guess rank them in some way i would i would say US is going to be dovish. JPY is probably going to be just as dovish and Euro is probably the only hawkish thing we'll see uh, this week. Yeah, and good points there. And then also to your point there, Frank, it's very interesting. We talked fundamentals for a moment <clears throat> in terms of central banks. We've got the COT report data pulled up and you can see it matches very, very similarly a lot of what you're saying. The pound the euro 
uh, both relatively hawkish central banks are very on the scale. They're very heavyweight in terms of what institutional traders are buying, according to the COT data. And we flip it around. We take a look at Japan. We look at Canada, or which I guess Canada doesn't quite match, but Japan for sure. Uh, and, and New Zealand shifting to the more bearish side. Uh, more on the dovish side of things so it's an interesting dynamic there we're seeing um in terms of the uh the the euro most hawkish japan most dovish and certainly uh institutional money seems to be flowing in those directions as well any preference for currencies going into this week do you have a do you have a favorite do you have a, a least favorite are you still bearish on the yen no so outside of gold yes i'm in one other thing i'm in swiss yen I took that long trade yesterday. Um, just overall, I was trying to get into short yen trades. They were also high. And then on this pullback we saw a couple days ago, um, just looked like a good entry point. So on a technical level, I just got in on a demand zone. Um, it did break under a trend line, but I, I still entered on a demand zone and it ended up coming back up to where we, were, we wanted it to go. So. so um, just trailing that for now, um, just short yen overall. I've been short yen for a while and COT is backing me up on that. Um, and yeah, that in gold. From FX, I'm holding back until I see what the Fed is actually doing. Why? Because what we're seeing is obviously the dollar index rolled over a little bit. Um, something that I really pay attention to is something like the dollar index or even when trading crypto, I look at the USDT dominance because they give me information about the overall shape of the rest of the market, right? They, they give me like a bird's eye view for a quick, um, um, you know, like let's just say trading setups become um, more difficult or easier when you trade in line with these indices, right? When USDT dominance is going up, then typically it means within the crypto sector, a lot of money is flowing out of the non-stables into the stable. And that actually means it's a rather bearish environment. Uh, same for the dollar index. When the dollar index is rolling over, typically it means um, that more money is going into the, uh, the risk markets, right? Whether it's the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. But if you ask me, those are... I mean, it's crazy. They're overextended. Like, uh, <laughs> like you can't even you can't even find words for that. Um, so yeah, the numbers came in cooler, uh, and I think what people really don't pay attention to too much is, as always, the devil is in the details. And if we look at yesterday's CPI number, it looks cooler on the headline, but it's not really cooler when you look into the components. So in fact, like the sticky inflation remained very much sticky. So we still have a lot of very relevant um, parts of the inflation uh, stuck at around 5%. And don't forget, that's 5% higher than last year's inflation where the whole war was really flaring up. So that's pretty high still. What brought the whole CPI number down is energy. And um, uh, mostly energy. And energy is a wild card because energy can be extremely volatile. You know, the Saudis obviously are trying to, um, uh, you know, it's a cartel control type of market. And if they if they go all crazy because, I don't know, Biden stood up with the wrong foot and kicked their asses even more, then that could influence markets a lot. One of the things, and I actually wrote an article about that the other day, why commodities continue to be rather beaten down despite this environment, <clears throat> First of all, um, the I don't think that China is recovering in the shape that a lot of people expected or hoped for. And a lot of the narrative about the stock markets going back up had to do with that. So that's one of the things that is really facing a dead end at some point, sooner than later, in my opinion. And um, the cost of commodities is very high because the interest rates are high. So it's really interesting that when the Fed increases interest rates, it actually makes dealing with commodities more expensive and that's why their prices are lower because it reduces the actual demand for it and but nonetheless if you if you consider all these things they actually advocate a weaker economy which would translate into a cheaper market which we're not seeing in this video i know i went through a lot of fundamental analysis based concepts so i put together a video just for you to help you out with this concept if you struggle with your fundamental analysis click here and check it out for yourself